all right guys so today we are kind of in i would say the immediate pre-spawn funk like there's a decent chunk of fish spawning right now and then there's a bunch of fish that are not spawning but are definitely up there and last few years i've done extremely well flipping a jig around the spawning areas you know whenever they were kind of in that weird funky mood i actually um got like a bluegill colored jig and flip it around so today i'm going to show y'all kind of the reason i designed the breacher jig from untamed tackle and we're going to kind of walk through the properties of it and show you how it's different than other jigs and then we're also just going to fish and cover water and kind of just guess be kind of a raw fishing video for today so i'm gonna get out a mini swim jig because that's going to do really really well for the spots that are lingering around some of these boat docks and then we're going to get out a breacher heavy cover flipping jig for flipping around wood so that's the target for today is definitely those little places where the fish stage and also some spawn so without further ado let's tie them up and get ready somebody left some salt and vinegar chips in the boat i don't know who, who the, who's those were but that's gonna be our little swim jig trailer right here a little three inch mayor Tilt y'all up a little bit so y'all can see. This is really just going to be the bait that I kind of cover water with. Shad aren't really spawning good yet, but they're really, really close. I could actually cut that down some. That's still a small profile though. That'd be good. Let's see how it swims. Yes, sir. That's gonna be it right there. We got road work. Sounds like they're shooting the old pavement off with a daggum bazooka. That's what it sounds like. Read this up. This is my rod that I have flipped the breacher on for. To be honest with y'all, we've been working on this jig for a couple of years. I've had this jig for a couple of years. Won a couple tournaments on it around here. Came in second in a big tournament last fall on it. Actually, one of the local team trail classics I ran and did the exact same thing we're doing now. We're doing today. It just was a postpone. It was actually a late summer almost early fall type of deal so there's the breacher i'm throwing it's donk donk color five eighths ounce with a green pumpkin watermelon cleanup crawl just a super bluegilly bait obviously the cool thing about this bait is this is a five eighths still got a thin cut skirt just like the ace does got a four alt hook in it pretty stout hook gamakatsu it's got a really good gap between the hook point and there you can see when you set the hook you're going to get them and that's very very important for me jig fishing so we got us two jigs rigged up and let's go see what we can do Water's a little stained. But this shows up pretty well in it. sunglasses move my camera somebody left the dr. pepper too
Look at that, it's unbelievable. Oh, he came off. He got me a little one. Little large mouth. You know, this is a, uh, obviously the regular Apex is my favorite swim jig ever. But this is a really cool one for them when they get in that weird zone, the water's clear, stuff like that. The good old mini swim. And I put this swim bait on there thinking I was just gonna wind it around docks and that's probably what I'm gonna do most of it. But anyways. I'm telling you, that's a cute little jig right there. A little cutie pie. <clears throat> Situational though, you gotta understand what you got. It's not really a 60 pound braid, 7.3 heavy rod jig. It's a it's more finesse. -y. Start catching some more, I'll break it down a little bit better, but this is how I wanna catch them right here. Catch them flipping. Y'all know me. Y'all know I like catching them flipping. This is a very, very popular place. This is a, basically a community hole in this lake. Gotta love a splinter. Come on, come on, get it. You know, the cool thing about this jig is, you know, it, it's kind of just one of those nuances to it that you have to kind of get used to, but it's like, because this jig is a smaller profile, a 5 8 fishes, you know, falls, relatively fast you know like 
the ace is a true half like it, it weighs actually a half ounce and if you cut the skirt down and put a trailer on it that doesn't catch a lot of water the half ounce ace actually falls really fast because of the, the actual profile of it and the skirt being a thin cut it doesn't catch a lot of water same principle with this one makes the five eight fish really really well i've got a cleanup crawl on it now which catches a little bit more water slows it down some but that's fine because you know it's still as a five eight so it's falling really really well but if y'all are not fishing the cleanup crawl i'm up dude i don't know i mean i know the properties of this bait i know it's a phenomenal bait but for whatever reason this sucker has been doing so well in so many tournaments there's been so many top twos and threes on this bait in big tournaments for the past like year ever since the pro staff and people have got them like this sucker just catches them which is pretty obvious why but it's just unbelievable that it's as good as it is because this sucker is different every time i put it on a jig it's like i smash them and then i you know we'll throw other trailers every once in a while because i want a different profile or a different fall rate or less action it doesn't matter this is <laughs> this is the trailer i just need to throw all the time because when i put it on i catch them if i put a regular chunk on i don't catch them nearly as good i don't know why so we're about to about to just commit to the cleanup crawl for all our jig fishing applications 100 percent of the time because it is definitely been outperforming for the past i guess i've had them for a year and a half a year and a quarter no a year and a half now probably this stuff is pretty this bank always disappoints me though catch fish here but it's not as good as it looks like it should be But I have caught some big ones here. And I, I've had some days where I've smashed them here. You just know there's something living on it. This is another big community hole bank on this lake. And you can tell whenever you've got the right bait for the day. Because you can come down through here with, you know, a bait and get a bite or two. Or none. And you come down through here with the right bait and catch like eight or nine because i've done it just get so much pressure that if you're not on top of what they want you're not gonna generate a lot of bites you know the places that get less pressure are the places you can go down through there with any bait and catch some you know this is not that type of place man it feels good though Feels like you should smash them here. I actually wanted to go to a different region of the lake today, where I was headed. Then they were doing road work, and I was right by the other boat ramp, and they were doing road work, and it was going to be a minute, so I was like, I'll just put it in here and fish. There's fish all over this lake, so maybe I'll be able to catch some cool too because this is the area that i grew up fishing the most and like you know i've already fished a couple places today that just bring back so many memories it's really really cool like over there i was fishing a place that was a little boat ramp i ain't caught a bass off of it since but i remember whenever i was young i, well, I only had two rods probably so i sat down it was super muddy i sat down and well, you know i was in an aluminum boat sucker floating all around Floated halfway off the bank by the time I got spinnerbait tied on. Tied on a big, bulky chartreuse spinnerbait with big blades. Big, I mean, big, giant spinnerbait. This was back in the day. And uh, tied that sucker on, trolled up to the bank. First cast with it, caught like a three and a half pounder. And I was like, dang. I just remember that was like, I remember that bite. I remember watching him eat it. It was cold. It was spinnerbait up there, real shallow. And saw the blades turning, saw the blade disappear three and a half pounder that was awesome i just i you know every time i fish there i remember that bite because i was like one of the first bites i got that was like that you know where i tied something on went up there and like realized that 
a bait can make a difference like that, you know? Cause I ain't, I hadn't caught nothing all day that day. I went up there and tied that spinner bait on, caught a dang good one. Just cool little stuff like that. That's why I like this lake so much. Y'all hear me talk about small little local lakes and just, man, this is where it started for me. It's just a really, really cool deal for me to be able to come here and be able to spend a lot of time here. There's so much cover on this bank, it's so hard for me to slow down also. That's, that can be a problem, you know? That's not always the correct approach. Sometimes you need to slow down. But if you notice my bait's not moving far on the cast, I typically pitch it up there and let it fall where I want it and then just kind of like in the span my boat moves 30 feet i've moved my bait you know three feet because i feel like i want to pick where i think they should be and the spotted bass ain't really like that spotted bass are kind of they get everywhere seems like if you want to catch spots you got to kind of drag around more in largemouth they typically get up there right where i want them to be at least the ones i catch so maybe maybe there's more around i just don't catch them because i don't fish for them efficiently okay, last year i went up to a big ish local tournament and we ran long ways to a place where there's a lot of wood and i was flipping this jig that was a fun a fun day flipping that sucker up there Doom! didn't catch any real big ones on it but caught some threes i think caught a three and a half and a three that day and i caught two fives on top water had a good bag There we go. See, he's a small one, but he got that sucker good. That just hook, see the hook hole right there where it came out? That's what's so important about your uh, hook gap, actually, on the jig is you can hook them fish so much deeper and not skin hook them whenever you've got a really good hook gap, you know? Which I've talked about that a lot in the videos. If y'all watched any of my videos, y'all know how important that is to me. It's probably more important to me than it actually is important in real life. But if it gets me another bite, if it lands me another one of the fish, that bit is worth all the all the thought I've put into it, in my opinion. Because that's that one bite you land is the difference in 60th and 35th, or second and first. You know, like that's. That's how important it is to me. That's why it's important to me. That was a cool bite. That sucker never hit the bottom. And I felt it. I knew it felt weird. I just picked up real slow and it was like, yes, sir. That'd be bass. Another, another cool thing about this jig is it falls straight down. That's, that's a key for a flipping jig. Like the ace glides kind of glides falls down which is better for getting bites in open water in my opinion or under docks and stuff but this one with it falling straight down helps it penetrate the cover better because it's going to you know use its use its energy of it falling more efficiently to get through the cover anyways y'all know the deal with the jig it's a good one now let's catch some on it it's more fun to talk about a three and a half pounder I caught when I was 12 years old out here by myself trolling around it's 
funny i used to fish this lake in that in the bandit and that was before the bandit had a four stroke mercury on it spotty dotty you know that's one of the reasons why i like compact jigs so much is because the lakes that i fish have so many spots in them obviously like that's a tiny spot but like if i can catch that one on the jig and a seven pounder on the same jig to me it's a it's a jig you want to throw because i mean sometimes you need a bite or two like you never need a fish like that but i'm just saying like you don't want to take the spotted bass out of it. like doing a big giant jig with a five volt hook or something a lot of times you take the spotted bass out of the equation because they just can't hardly get it you know i mean a four pounder can but like that two pounder you need to weigh in a lot of times it's like they can't get it but yeah anyways y'all seen the bandit in videos that's the boat i used to fish out of out here before it had a mercury four stroke on it that sucker did not like to crank at all but that made for some good stories i'd be down here 12 13 years old flood that sucker out trying to get it to crank have to go fish for 45 minutes till it till it ain't flooded no more and try it again let the sun get on it heat it up and then she'd go it usually wouldn't strand you all day but it was strand you for half the day or some of the day but y'all know how them two strokes are once you get them fired up they good for the rest of the day at least that one was when that sucker crunk he was good to go That's a co-angler cast right there. Then you just throw whatever you can possibly throw at, even if it is a buoy. Throw to whatever you can. To pass under the tip of a dock. That's the exact scenario you want. Just uh, about two pounds bigger would be nice. So if you take a look at this jig, you can see I cut the skirt. What is that, about a half inch below the hook shank? So maybe the wind noise is better i cut the skirt like right down there then i cut the cleanup crawl down to where it's a small you know small compact profile all of our jigs come with a longer skirt just in case you want to hang a chunk or something like that but for the most part i usually cut mine about probably about right there a quarter to a half an inch past the the hook shank 
where I normally cut it. Just because when I throw this jig, I want a smaller profile. That's what I designed it for. Not a small profile. Like I've caught a lot of really, really big ones on this jig, but the, you know, a little bit smaller profile to me just makes it more efficient in and out of the cover. And then also gets a few more bites typically for me. Came in a little bit hot. This is some decent stuff too. buck bass up there he got a coal tag hole in him 2024 we don't use that kind no more i didn't think Let's see if old miss thing's up there with it up there on the seawall super shallow i feel like i'm fishing the nursery today though so if y'all can hear the uh the braid actually grinding whenever i'm catching a fish I'm using a four strand braid for this swim jig. I'm using a I'm using 30 pound Sunline SX1. That's what I've got on here. A 7-1 medium Muse from 13 Fishing. Eight to one gear ratio reel. You know, the, the reason I use a four strand braid for this is because a four strand braid is actually stronger at the same diameter than an eight strand braid. So whenever I downsize to like a 30, to me, I can have the casting distance, the thin wire, the, the thin diameter, and still retain more strength using a four strand braid over an eight strand braid. Now, sometimes if I wanna cast like, you know, top waters, buzz bait, stuff like that, that I don't really set the hook super hard on, and I don't set the hook hard on this either, but I do throw this in, you know, under docks and a semi heavy cover, so I want a little bit more strength. But I, I'll use the eight strand braid you know the amz 35 pound braid i use it a lot but uh you know for this exact situation i just like that thinner diameter and a little more strength so that's why i'm using a rough braid this time or four strand a little bit stronger i feel like a lot of people don't don't know that but a four strand is is has a higher breaking strength same diameter typically and retains the strength a little bit better They're cutting up. Got 
I actually threw up here one time like last year on that seawall and I saw a big weight coming up. I was throwing on top of the frog and uh, saw a giant wake behind it and like a, a tiny little swirl like where he bit at it. I was like, what is that, dude? It's just a huge wake. And it follows my frog all the way to the boat. And it's a giant snapping turtle. Boy, if it had bit that dang frog, I'd have set the hook on him. I'd have been like, what the heck do I got? That sucker got out of there with it. Look at where he's hooked at. Not coming off. So the setup for this this rod and reel, this is a 7.6 medium heavy Muse and uh, from 13. 8.3 to 1 gear ratio concept C, 22 pound Sunline shooter. 22 and 25, those are the those are the two sizes I use on it. I don't, if I'm flipping in cover, I don't use 20. I use 22 or 25. And I use 22 90% of the time. It's rare for me to use 25, but sometimes I do. I usually keep one rigged up with 25 just in case it's, you know, something super gnarly. Big giant log jams or something. I will flip 25, but 22 gets the job done. 90% of the time. There's one on bed up there. He's an itty bitty baby boy. You know, a lot of people ask me why, you know, I used to build my own rods and I used to use a 7.3 heavy for a swim jig, a 7.6 heavy for flipping. And people ask me why I use a medium heavy now and 13 fishing rods are more powerful, the blanks are, than the rods that I was using. So, you know, it's not, that that's a good or a bad thing it's just that that's something to keep into consideration so a seven six heavy muse to me is a little bit too powerful for this technique you know so i like the seven six medium heavy and it's very very powerful for a medium heavy there's most brands of medium heavies are not don't have nearly the amount of power which is just something to keep in mind We need us a good one. There's a nice one. How about that one?
little three and a half pound male. Maybe not a male, but I thought it was female. Looks like a little bigger three and a half, maybe. It's a nice one. All right, guys, that's a wrap. See that trussle right there behind me? I've jumped off that sucker so many times when I was young and in high school, and my name was spray painted on that sucker like everybody else's is. But, well, the lighting's bad, ain't it? Oh, well, we're, uh, that was fun, you know? We was out here for like an hour and 20 minutes, I think, and caught seven or eight. Most of them really small, caught a really nice one there at the end, but that's really what I wanted to do was kind of show y'all why we designed that breacher jig and kind of the way that I use it and uh, you know why it's different than the ace like typically if I'm gonna fish jigs that day I'm gonna have both of them tied on so that's kind of was the main purpose of the video and also a good excuse to get out here and flip a jig around because uh, by far one of the most fun ways to catch them especially when that line starts running and you just get tight on them and bust them like that's really really fun so appreciate you guys watching we'll see y'all